Has he improved? He needs to catch a 10 or a jack or a club. Kevin is still one card away from knocking out his roommate. Zoe still a pretty big underdog. He needs to get lucky here to survive, and he does get lucky. Runner, runner, flush for Zoe. Kareem, and Vance, when your roommate does things like that to you, you know, you start saying, hmm, maybe it's time to get a new roomie here. This guy's not very lucky for me. Oh, wow, no sharing the toothpaste tomorrow. <laughs> this is getting little, fun. I, I run a little too good. With Zoe Kareem's double up, we end our first hour of coverage at the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Guys, Zoe really is on a roll. How important is momentum in this game? Well, Amanda, in my opinion, poker's not unlike any sport. Momentum plays a key role in winning. And certainly in poker, you can get on a momentum rush in a number of ways. For example, you can pick up several big hands in a row. You got momentum. You're doing well. You're feeling good. You can bluff a couple pots where you know you earn those pots by stealing them. And you can do like Zoe just did where you suck out on the river and you stay alive in a tournament and when that happens you feel like boy it's an omen for me i can win this thing i never want to be good if i can just drill every river i don't know i'd rather be good man and i think zoe's going to be very tough nah. to get out of this tournament but still you got to give the nod right now to kevin eister our chip leader he came to the final table chip leader still our chip leader he'll be the guy to beat tonight all right and vince are the players a little quieter at the table than you expected yeah, yeah, we did expect a little bit more talk, but that doesn't mean anything because these guys are really concentrated. There's big money at stake. And especially, you talk about a guy like Daniel Letts, the Jamaican. The guy's got half a haircut, all right? This is big money for that man. If he takes his title, he can get the whole thing done. So, good luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Join us next time from Hollywood, Florida for more of Season 11's coverage of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Until then, for Mike Saxon, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and the whole WPT team, I'm Amanda Leatherman saying thanks for watching. Good night. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In South Florida, the air is hot, but the players are cool. Season 11's extended coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown continues, and it's only on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He needs the extreme miracle. Oh! Welcome back to our in-depth coverage of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown in Hollywood, Florida. I'm Amanda Leatherman, sitting in for Kimberly Lansing. Joining me is WPT's own in-house poker experts, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Guys, we still have six players remaining. What's your take on these players? Well, Amanda, my first take is, is that youth is once again prevailing on the World Poker Tour. Four out of these six players, 27 years of age or younger. And our current chip leader, 23-year-old Kevin Eister, is the guy to beat here tonight, I think. He came to the final table as chip leader. He's still the chip leader. Going to be tough to get these young guns out of here, Vince. And Vince, what should we look for as the competition continues? Well, Amanda, it's, it's, it's tough. We're watching some very tricky, you know, South Florida steaming action. They're playing fast. But you know what? There's a lot at stake, a lot of money. All right, we have word that the cards are about to go back in the air. So let's get down to the table. Well, there you see Kevin Eister well out in front, 4.7 million in chips. The Cajun trying to do it. First play is going to take home 660,000, and he's a 5,000. Blinds at 25 and 50. To the felt we go. Action on Zoe Kareem, 26 year old folds. Daniel Letts. Daniel from Jamaica, living in Miami now. He's out, but here's Paul. He backs players in other tournaments. Yeah, guys that don't have buy-ins, he actually stakes them for a piece of the action. He's made it 110 to go. Couple folds around to Ben. He's a tattoo shop owner. He's going to make this call with an 8-4 of clubs. Ben was a sales exec for 20 years. He was a suit, as he called himself. Got rid of that job, opened up a tattoo shop. Loves his life now. Got four kids, rides the motorcycles. Got to love it. Flops ace, ace, eight, makes Paul three of a kind. Hitting a nice hand. Ben has a piece of that. Yeah, he's got the two eights. Might get him in trouble here. Paul's bet 125. Ben's going to stick around. Now a six comes off. So Ben drawing dead now. 
He checks it. Now, Paul's been burned by this guy a couple times at this final table so far. Might be fearful he's got three aces with a better kicker, so he checked it. Ben's going to check the river as a king comes up. Now you got to feel like three aces for sure is the best hand. Paul feels that way, and he's going to try to get a value bet of 240000 in. You hit that king, huh, Paul? Not very good conversationalist, so I can't really say the same thing Kevin does. Yeah, you're not really supposed to anyway. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that rule. This should be a nice getaway if Ben could lay this down. And the bet is 240. Ben, the tattoo shop man, will fold the hand. Nicely done. And Paul will pick up this pot. There's the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar where the beautiful Royal Flush Girls talk to just about anyone, about anything, <laughs> I oh suppose. Boy. I don't know for sure. Yeah, but. you're going to get him in trouble there. <laughs> OK. It is fun. Yeah, that's what I asked. Back to this hand. <laughs> Paul, quick fold. Kevin Eister out. <laughs> Action over to Jeff Matson. It's second WPT final table this season, but he folds as well as this Ben. So it's a battle of the blinds here. So Kareem now with just a queen three of diamonds. Zo likes video games. Used to work at the family video store. He's going to raise. Makes it 120 to go into Daniel. That's he lives in Miami now, but he's a Jamaican. Oh. Makes the quick call. Got in this tournament on a satellite. Actually was running bad there once. Vince slept in his car for a week. So you know the money means a lot to this guy. All right. Well, flop comes ace, king, deuce. No help to either player, but... Looks like Zoe's going to make the continuation bet here, and that is going to be the case. 130, and Daniel Letts, a local, originally out of Jamaica, is going to make the nice lay down. So Kareem taking down that pot. Mm hmm. So Kareem. Yeah, he's a friend and a roommate of Kevin Eister. Yeah, these guys travel the road together. Kevin, the chip leader here at this table, as you can see, and pretty unusual roommates making the final table together. <laughs> Certainly is. Six players remain here at the Seminole Hard Rock. Back to the felt. Kevin Eister folds. Jeff Madsen from Santa Monica. Two-time World Series bracelet winner. Folds the hand as well. Now Ben is going to raise. And so Kareem has picked up a pair of aces. Just a dream. What a time to get it. Got the sucker on your right betting before you. And here comes the raise. Yes, 265 to go. Daniel out. Paul going to look at a pair of jacks. Uh-oh. Wow. Now the pot has been raised and re-raised in front of you. You pick up two jacks here. Looks like a pretty big hand, but let's see what you do. Well, sometimes the guy on the button re-raises a guy just because he has position. Doesn't have to be that strong. So look at this. That's what Paul's thinking. Thinks his jacks might be out in front. He re-raises. Ben out. Now, do you just slow play this right now and just got the guy wrapped up, just call and try to disguise a little bit? Or do you push? What'd you start the hand with, Paul? Like, over three? Not exactly sure. Okay. Well, Zoe's got about 2.2 million. Be shocked if he just doesn't get it in here. All in? Wow, he is doing exactly that. Well, he does get it all in. I think, I think Paul can get away from this hand right now. Man, it's going to cost him about another million and a half to make the call. Yep, he's already put in 725. He's going to make a quick call. Wow, he does make a snap call a now. Gambling call. That's debatable. He four bet the pot and yet got re raised all in. I mean, you almost have to put the guy on aces, kings, or queens, it would seem like. Mm -hmm. You just think if the guy had ace, king, he would call your raise, look at a flop where he put the rest of his money in. Flop comes up 995. No luck for Paul with the Jacks. Zo well out in front with the Aces. Yeah, Paul is going to have to catch a Jack to win this pot. Six on the turn, down to the river. Paul must catch a Jack to win this pot. Nothing else will do. Otherwise, he's pretty much destroyed. And Zoe's now the hero at the table. Can Zo do this? Well, a king comes off. I saw paint. I was like, well, the second time those double up through Paul at this final table. Oh, there's, there's, there's not nothing near the jacket. Six players going after a huge title here at the Seminole Hard Rock. We have a quick break in the action, but up next, a special look at a WPT Ones to Watch that shows how one player found a hot home here in South Florida. 
Plus, the Royal Flush Girls suit up to soak in the South Florida sun. You really don't want to miss this, so stick around. Sometimes we want to play poker without the hassling with traffic, the crowded poker rooms. That's why we love ClubWPT.com, where we play for our share of 100000 in monthly cash and prizes from the comfort of our homes. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. here at Seminole Hard Rock to do. There's really never a time where you don't know what to do or you may be bored because there's always something going on here. We had our Royal Flesh Girl game. It was open to our players and our Cub qualifier played with us, Carl. The Royal Flesh Girl games was so much fun. All of us girls got to be the team captain for our teammates. Our teammates. I've always been very athletic. I love volleyball. I used to play when I was younger. I love playing. I dive in the sand and do all that fun stuff. I wasn't the most excited Royal Flush girl when I was told we were playing volleyball. One. I think one of the players got really upset because they couldn't even like serve the ball over the net, and every time I hit it, it hit it out of bounds and kept losing points for our team. Is that out? So I'm pretty sure that one of the players just hit me in the head with the ball to kind of knock some sense into me. Oh. I felt my brain shake. Everybody thinks that I'm the most competitive person out of all the Royal Flush girls, yes. I can do this all day, you know? Unfortunately, we lost. Ah! Came in second. Tua came in first. Number <laughs> 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 one. <laughs> well, Vance, one thing's for sure. There's no losers on the volleyball court when the Royal Flush girls are out there. <laughs> It is a tough life out here, <laughs> huh, Mike? Oh, man. We're having a great time at the Seminole Hard Rock. And right now, you see Kevin Eister is the chip leader. Joe Kareem, his roommate on the road, in second place right now. So the roomies are dabbing it right now in first and second chip position. Blinds at 25 and 50. To the felt we go. Jeff Madsen from Santa Monica with a nothing hand. Folds it. And now Ben, the tattoo shop owner, with a pair of aces. Wow, 115. Well, you know what he's saying under his breath right now, Vince. Come on, you young pups. Raise me. Please raise me. Somebody raise me. Will he get action? Everyone's folding. Kevin Eister last to... No, it's going to wrap it up. Ben can't get action with the aces. It always is a little frustrating. You pick up aces and get no action. And there's the Royal Flush Girl social bar. And at the bar, we see ClubWPT.com qualifier Carl Hutchins. He played in the event. He's been having a great time all week, hanging out. And you know what? If you're a Club WPT VIP member, you can receive preferred seating. You can come out, meet us, Mike and I, Kimberly, Tony Dunst, and the Royal Flush Girls at all our televised live <laughs> events. All right, to the felt we go, Zoe. Yeah, the 26-year-old pro out of Orlando, Florida, raising it up here. But look at this. Daniel has picked up two aces. Now, Vince, when you play poker, you're only, on average, supposed to pick up aces once every 220 hands. But look how many times aces have come out at this final table tonight. Incredible. Daniel, the local grinder has re-raised. Jeff Matson. he folds as well. Everyone's folding back around to Zoe, and he's going to fold. So Daniel taking down that pot. Ace is not really paying off, getting little pots. And there's Daniel Let's wife Laura sweating her man. This tournament attracted several current WPT ones to watch, including Sean Deeb, AP Fahurat, and Brian Hastings. Sean was the only player out of the three to cash, but the good news is that Brian Hastings didn't have to go far to find comfort, since he's adopted South Florida as a second home, as we see in this edition of Ones to Watch. Yeah, Brian Hastings, right? I mean, he's definitely the ones to watch. He's a Cornell grad, he's an entrepreneur, he's one of the best poker players in the world. I don't think I've ever seen him smile. He's always smiling and having a good time, not taking things too seriously. Brian Hastings, the legend, he's uh, awesome. He had legendary heads-up matches online where he wins something like $400 trillion and heads up match in 12 hours. Most money I've won in one day is $4.18 million. Um, that was in a heads-up Pilo match against Victor Blom. 
fan. I was watching a friend play Victor, and just uh, the matches were always really fun to watch, as well as the play. Just a lot of action back and forth. And I thought, man, I really don't feel like studying right now. I'd much rather be playing. After the first million or so, I'd say he started tilting pretty hard, and that was helpful as well. All I wanted to do was go out and celebrate. I felt like I was on cloud nine, and then all my friends were like, eh, I'm studying. <laughs> it was just the complete wrong time for that in a college town. Ryan Hastings, you're awesome, bro. Sicko. Ooh, wait, you bragging about that hand? You did nothing in that hand. I, I, I got the real hand out and then took got it heads up against the hand. <laughs> she taking credit for that. Next level. I, I, I love when other players underestimate me. I mean, it's the best. High stakes poker is largely driven by egos, and if it's a bunch of professionals playing against each other, there's got to be one professional that's overestimating their ability for there to be a poker game. Brian plays as close to optimal as anyone you'll ever see. I've never been a guy who's really completely driven by money. I was drawn to poker for the competitive aspect. I realized it was something that I could be good at and that I can get better and measure myself against the competition. That being said, the money is a nice bright product of poker. You guys got the cheat codes life, probably has infinite money, but you don't see him out spending tons of cash on stupid stuff. I saw that he bought a condo in Florida and living the dream. I have to watch my skin doesn't melt off in this hot Florida sun. He's definitely one of those goofy, really smart kids. It's good stuff who doesn't even understand how smart he is. I think there's a lot of things that come out of his mouth that he actually thinks sound dumb, but to intelligent people, they realize just how creative and how unique his thought process is. To be honest, I don't think I'm as smart as I seem in the, <laughs> on paper. Well, Brian Hastings, don't buy that, folks. The guy's a genius, certainly an online genius, trying to make his mark out here in live tournaments, but... Highly respected, well-liked Brian Hastings. Mm -hmm. I want to be Brian Hastings. Yeah, multi-millionaire in your low 20s, Vance. Not a bad condo overlooking Lauderdale, but he's a nice guy. I'm glad he's doing so well. Back to the felt, we got a couple folds. Kevin Ice is going to raise with Ace-10. Make it 110, and look at this. Jeff Madsen going to get aggressive with a pair of ducks. He's gone all in. Ben out, Zoe folds. Kevin's gonna make this call. Well, the snap call, that's what the problem is when you move all in against the chip leader with the low pair, they call you, because they got plenty of dough. And now, Jeff's in a race for his tournament life right here. Whoa, Jeff Madsen started out with some nice chips, but now in trouble here, but it's a good flop for him. Two fours and a nine. That's the cards lie. Kevin needs an ace, 10, or a nine to take the lead here. Jeff Madsen with two World Series of Poker bracelets, a fine player, a three of diamonds. Jeff looking good to double up now. Well, second time, Jeff's made a WPT final table this season. Just gotta dodge an ace, 10, nine, or a three to win this pot and double up. Down to the river we go, let's see what happens. And a 10 a comes off. A river card for Kevin Eister to knock Jeff Madsen out of again, this Jeff. tournament. And yet again, Vince, poor Jeff. Is a sixth place finisher. Wasn't his night again on the World Poker Tour. He's going to take home 100,000. And right now, the very talented Jeff Madsen, the wild man, is over to talk to WPT Executive Tour Director Matt Savage. Jeff, you never really got anything going tonight. How disappointing is this for you? Yeah, it sucks. I mean, I was just car dead and short, so nothing I could do. Uh, frustrating. But, uh, yeah. Another 100K to the, to the bankroll. I mean, is that important to you now, or are you just thinking about, you know, trying to win one of these events? I mean, it's all important, but I want to win. So, just have to work and get back here again. All right, well, I like that confidence. Amanda, back to you. Busting out in sixth place for the second time this season is Jeff Madsen. Plenty more action when we return to the final table of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Stick around. Texas Hold'em takes just a few minutes to learn and a lifetime to master. That's why we created the WPT Poker Trainer that lets you work on your game anytime you want, from anywhere you want, on your iPhone or iPad. Download your copy today. Welcome back to Season 11's coverage of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. This tournament could prove to be crucial in the race for WPT's Player of the Year. Going into this event, Matt Salzberg and Paul Volpe were in a tie. On day three, Paul busted in 27th place, earning him 50 points, while Matt went out the next day in 13th place, earning him 150 points. This gives Matt a slight lead in the race, but with two WPT non-televised main events and the season-ending WPT World Championship still on the schedule, it's anyone's guess who will take down the Player of the Year honor. To learn more about how the Player of the Year points are determined, log on to WPT.com. 
In the meantime, let's get back to the action with Mike and Vince. Well, there you see the chip counts. Kevin Eister still out in front with 5.5 million. Came to the final table as chip leader. He's still there. That is right. And now the antes and blinds are going up. And he's now 10,000. The blinds, 30 and 60,000. Down to the table we go. Well, action on Daniel Letts, the guy from Jamaica that got in this tournament on a $500 satellite. He is loving it right now, but folds this hand. And so does Paul. And now the chip leader, Kevin Eister, with an ace deuce. He's got the button he's going to raise to 135. Kevin makes it 135. And Ben Tarzia, the tattoo shop owner, picks up a pair of fives. Well, let's see how he's going to play him. He knows this Kevin Eister is a very aggressive player, could raise with any two cards, especially on the button, especially as chip leader. So do you re-raise with two fives? No, you just call with them. Actually, now on Zoe, he's got an attractive ace jack. He's in the big blind. Now, Vince, he may three bet here. He knows Kevin could raise on the button with any two cards. The guy in the small blind didn't re-raise, so you know he's not that strong, and that's exactly what Zoe's doing. I actually like this play by Zoe. 60, yep, he has re-popped Kevin out, and now it's back on Ben with the fives. And he is content to just call it. Going to make the call. Look at a flop here. So ace check versus two fives. Who's going to get lucky? Oh, and it looks like it's Ben. Three of a kind, three fives. Dream flop for him, not just because he flopped three fives, but because his opponent flopped two aces. But it goes check, check on the flop. Oh. Wow, can't believe Zoe checked that. Seven of hearts on the turn. And Ben's got to be so excited. Show tunes going off in his head. He says the guy didn't bet on the flop. Maybe he's got a pair of tens or jacks or something. And of course, Zoe gonna call. Can't blame him. He has aces. Down to the river we go. Four diamonds, three of a kind, looking so solid. Ben saying to himself, look, the guy called me on the turn. Maybe he'll call me again on the river. I sure hope so. He puts in 650. So Snap calls him on the river with the aces, but they're not good enough here. Yep, that is a nice donation. Ben Tarzia out of Canada. Non-professional, of course. Taking down a very good one. He is hitting some cards tonight. He is playing deceptive poker. Could have got expensive if I bet the flop. Sorry? So I could have got more sense if I bet the flop. He's married with four children. He could have got a bit more trouble. He certainly had a lot of good flop tonight, no doubt about it. Nice family man, was a suit for 20 years, a sales exec. Now one's a tattoo shop. It's his cousin right there. His name is Rubens. I'm sure he gets free tattoos. <laughs> yeah, I'm not three bad with nothing. You should know me by now. We played together long enough. And same here. Same here. I didn't learn. I just decided just to... You just figured fire, fire, fire. Oh, now he's lecturing him. There's nothing wrong with that either. He is racking up chips. As long as you... <laughs> it was fun when you did it. This thing is wide open. To the table we go. Action on Paul. Who's on the short stack now? He folds. Kevin Eister. Now gonna stay aggressive, raises here with the 10 7. Mm -hmm. And Ben is gonna slop around with a 9 6 of diamonds. Why not? He's on a roll. It seems like he hits every flop he plays. Zoe and Daniel out. It's a two way action 9 6 versus 10 7. And here comes the flop. Ace 3 3, no help to either player. Wow, surprised Kevin wouldn't have made a continuation bet with that flop, but he doesn't. And it goes check, check. King of diamonds on the turn. Still no help to either player. Kevin just checking again. Well, Ben's saying, look, he's not going to bet at this spot. Maybe I will. Ben does make a bet of 150000 And Kevin has had enough of that. Doesn't want to tangle with Ben. Well, a nice bet there by Ben to take down that pot. Thanks, man. Poker, to me, is the ultimate rush. It's the ultimate rush without putting a drug in your body. It's the ultimate adrenaline rush without risking your life. Instead of using swords like they did 500 years ago, we're using our chips. You're trying to take my life, I'm trying to take yours. I mean, as pleasant as we can be about it, it's all a battle to the death, right? Well, he is so right. It is a great game. It is fun. Well, it certainly is war on the green felt, Vince. It is. No doubt about it, but 
and Ben is out in second chip position with close to 4.7. Yeah, he is doing great here. What an effort. Because he does it all for the wife and kids. Let's take a look at his hand. He's picked up a pair of deuces here. Not bad. Blinds at 30 and 60, and he makes it 125. Zoe out. Daniel Letts also folding. Round to the short stack. Paul Duguzima. He backs poker players, a fine player himself, but he's going to fold. 125. Well, Kevin Eister, the ultra aggressive player, just calls here with two fives. So we have deuces versus fives. And the flop's an ace, king, queen. And that's a flop neither player going to like. Certainly don't. Kevin checks, Ben checks. Both running scared. Here comes the turn. Uh, eight on the turn. Again, Kevin checks. And look at this. Ben reaching for chips here. He's going to bet the two ducks, and they're going to quack, quack as Kevin goes away. So for the second pot in a row, Ben beats Kevin with the worst hand by betting. Well, there's still five players left at the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Stay with us. Poker to me is, it gives you some freedom. It's like being a rebel. It's different from the, the real working world. You set your own hours. There's not really a hierarchy that you have to answer to, and you make your own rules, because I like dealing with everybody on the same level. I see everybody as the same. In a nine to five, there's a chain of command, and sometimes you have to bite your tongue. In poker, you don't bite your tongue. You say what you express yourself on the table. If the person is actually too arrogant or obnoxious, I will I'll let them know that. Well, Daniel, a happy go lucky guy. Very happy to be at this final table because wherever he finishes, he's going to be a nice payday for him. He's playing good poker as five players remain here at the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Down to the felt we go. Action on Paul Duguzima. Businessman out of St. Petersburg, Florida, came in as the second chip leader. Now in the short stack, folds his hand. Kevin Eister going to raise it with a 7-5 offsuit here. And Ben on the button going to call with a 7-5 suited. Zoe with a big ace queen of diamonds, also just calling. Wow, can't believe he wouldn't be raised with that hand. And look at this. Daniel has picked up ace jack. Now he's going to call as well. So we're going to have four-way action in a raised pot in a five-handed poker game. Pretty amazing. Yes, it is. Here come the first three. Let's take a look. Now flop comes ace, king, 10. Zoe out in front with the two aces with the queen kicker. He's going to check. Daniel going to check his aces as well. Ice to with nothing, wraps his finger, Ben. Now Ben makes the elbow check. I don't see that very often. That's a sign of weakness. To check. <laughs> Nine of clubs on the turn. Well, as though thinking his aces are the best hand right now with the queen kicker, and in fact they are. This could spell trouble for Daniel here. Because the way this hand was played, you're never going to put your... Zoe on an ace-king, or ace-queen, in fact, because he didn't raise before the flop. Right, Kevin and Ben definitely fold, so two-way action. They both have aces as we go to the river. And they both have the ace-high straight draw. Now the five of diamonds comes off. And Zoe contemplating what to do here. And look at this. It's $280,000 bet into a pot that has over a million in it. This is sort of what we call a blocker bet. It's a value bet, a blocker bet. All combined into one there. There's Daniel's wife, Laura. Well, the way this hand was played, oh, man. Yeah. He's going to call. I think you have to call if you're Daniel in this spot. He just got out kicked. Uh, Certainly can't fall in for calling there with the two aces. Zoe picking up a nice pot. Yeah, against the local grinder, Daniel. OK, and right now, let's take a look at the WPT stack tracker. Well, the stack tracker indicates the ebb and flow of the chip counts of these players at the final table. You can see Zoe started on the short stack. He's going way up. Daniel not getting much going. Ben gained a little bit. And Kevin, who came to the final table yeah, as chip so leader, he dropped a little bit, but still in the chip lead. Blinds at 30 and 60. Action on Paul. He is 
card dead lately. He folds his hand, and Kevin with a queen 10. And this guy is just relentless. He bets on anything, raises, and he's done it again. 135 to go. Ben out. Zoe out. Back around to Daniel. He's going to make the call with the king 10. All right, so Daniel has a shot. Daniel getting down there in chips. Only 670 at the start of this hand. Flop comes up ace. 9-7. Oh, look at that. Daniel just moving all in here with just king high, and he's going to win this pot. Yes, very nicely done. So Daniel could become the first Jamaican to ever win a WPT title. He stays alive. Oh, boy. We're watching these guys in South Florida. Going after this title, this is fun. Oh, Vince, I'll tell you who also had fun this week. That was our club, WPT.com qualifier, Carl Hutchins from Kentucky. He won his seat and expenses paid down here to Florida. Got to play in this tournament. Got to meet Scotty Wynn, one of his poker idols. Hung out with the Royal Flush girls. The guy had a great time this week. He certainly did. And you know what? You, too, can have a great time on the World Poker Tour if you go to club, WPT.com, become a member. You get to play all the poker you want. You get to win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes. You also get the Entertainment Savers Guide. You get the WPT magazine. Also, you get to look at some videos, films of the World Poker Tour episodes. So if you want to study certain players, take a look. That really helps your game. And by the way, you don't just have to be on PC now. We're also on Mac computers, so there's no reason why you shouldn't be playing. And who knows? You might win a seat to a WPT event just like Carl. ClubWPT.com. Check it out. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. All right, back to the felt. And once again, Kevin Eister, still our chip leader. So Kareem, his traveling roommate in second place. The Canadian, Ben Tarzi in third place. Five players left, fighting enough for this title. First to act, Kevin, the chip leader. And look at this, with just a jack four, again, he's going to raise. Makes it 120 to go. Ben out. Vince, he raises with these junk hands under the gun in first position. That's true. Now his roommate, Zoe, with the button, with just a jack-10 off suit. Well, obviously, Zoe knows him better than anybody. Knows he raised with junk in first position. And he's going to re-raise him here with a jack-10. Wow, that's no one your player. Daniel out. Well, just shows you. No love for roommates when you're at these final tables. Paul can't possibly call this and doesn't. Oh, man. I feel like 95% of my hands I have right here. This is in the lower bar. Well, Kevin gives it up and sort of smiling, but when he sees his roommate came over the top of him with a Jack-10 offsuit, he might be applying for new roommates. Who knows? First place going to take home 660000 here in Hollywood, Florida. There's the WPT Champions Cup. When you win a championship, your name gets inscribed on that beautiful trophy. We're at the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Having a great time all week. Five players remain. We started this play with... With 542 entries, we're down to these five. Zoe going out of this hand, as does Daniel. Yeah, around to Paul. He's on the button, but looks at the junk hand. Doesn't have many chips. I'm sure just going to wait for a better spot. Yep. And now Mr. Aggressive Kevin, this time, has a decent hand. Jack, 10 of diamonds. Doesn't know what to do with a good hand. But decides to raise 140 to go. And with a decent ace jack. Uh, Vince against this guy. This hand figures to be the best because Kevin raised with anything. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can tell me what he has tattooed on his elbow. Well, what the heck is that? Looks like a dice. A pair of dice? I don't know. Could be a tree in a forest. Who knows? Anyway, he's called and the flop comes up five four deuce. Well, Kevin's gonna check, and Ben checks right behind him. Didn't want to get check raised out of the pot, and eight comes off. Well, Kevin checks, and Ben checks again, so we're going to the river. Well, now a three comes off. So Kevin, who raised pre-flop, is now going to try to represent. He's got an ace in his hand. Knows he's probably not going to win the pot with Jack High. He's going to bet out. Yeah, 125 and a quick call by the man that has the real hand. Ben has the five high straight, makes the call, takes down the pot, 
And even though Kevin didn't win that putt, I like his bet on the river there. <laughs> Jack Tennant <Dennis> straight. <laughs> he goes, Jack Tennant straight. Goes, he goes two, three, four, five, Jack Tennant straight. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, Jack. <laughs> now on the other side of his arm there. Two, three, four, five, Jack. Ten. It's straight. I don't know. Well, don't worry. In case he wins this tournament, you'll be seeing a WPT tattoo <laughs> on that right arm, folks. I guarantee you that. Well, Ben Tarzia, very impressive with his poker tonight from Canada. Boy, he's in third chip position at this point. Okay, right back at him. Paul quickly folds. Kevin out. And now Ben with a queen jack of clubs will raise. Yeah, makes it 125,000 to go. Zoe out. There is. And Daniel now with an ace eight. And he's announced raise. I'm all in. Oh, he's going all in here. Make it count, please. He's got nearly 800,000 in chips. Now ben can well afford to make this call. <laughs> Daniel's wife rooting him on. Put it in there. That's where it needed to go, right in there. No. Yeah. And he's still going to have about four million, even if he makes the call and loses the pot. So. WWJD. Because you have that many chips left, it does make this call a little bit easier, and he does make it. A local grinder, Daniel Letts, out in front at this point as a favorite. And the wife chewing the gum a lot faster right now. She knows her man's tournament life is on the line. He's out in front now. Can he stay there? And the flop oh. comes up. Jack, 8-5. Bad for Daniel. Tough flop for Daniel. He flopped a pair of eights, but his opponent has flopped two jacks. He now needs an ace or an eight to take the lead. Wow, Ben just out flopping Daniel there. Laura, a little disgusted. To the turn we go. It's a seven of hearts. We are down to the river. Daniel needs an ace or an eight. Otherwise, his tournament is going to be over. Got this tournament to a $500 satellite. What an accomplishment for Daniel. But now he needs some luck, and he does not get it. So tough luck right there for Daniel Letts. Great effort by him. Got in this tournament on a $500 satellite. He'll be cashing out $122,000. So he had a great week here, but tough beat there to get outdrawn and get knocked out. Daniel Letts, man with half a haircut. Can get the whole thing done now. He is out, and he's over to talk to WPT Executive Tour Director Matt Savage. Daniel, 122,000 this week. Tell us a little bit about your experience this week. Uh, well, I enjoyed it very much, you know. At the end, uh, I got it in good. That was, that's what counts, and uh, I got beat by Queen Jack against Ace 8, you know. They, you know, it's poker. These things happen. We had some great family support back there. Obviously, Laura's here looking lovely. You know, you're a pretty lucky guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as I always tell myself, when uh, if I do bad at poker, I always have something good to go home to. And yeah. it looks like you're going to be able to get that other half a haircut this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah. Probably I should have done it earlier and changed one. <laughs> All right, congratulations again. All right. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks, Matt. Daniel Letts is out in fifth place. WPT's extended coverage of the final table here in South Florida continues right after this. Season 11 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by Vegas.com. Vegas.com. Do Vegas right. Welcome back to Hollywood, Florida and the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. The World Poker Tour is committed to building strong ties in their community through the WPT Foundation. The Seminole Hard Rock also takes community involvement seriously, but does it in a fun and exciting way. This week, while players were working hard to make it to the final table, across the room there was a group of players including myself, Mike, Vince, and the Royal Flush Girls found a charity game that was designed to be a little less stressful and a lot more fun. I have fun. That's all I'm here to have good fun. I'm going to talk some more trash to these other guys and wait till all the other NFL players get knocked out. Playing horrible. Time to go home. It's just like the Super Bowl. If you don't win at all, man. and you next to me at the end of the season, you got me sweating over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> donation, donation. 
My foundation is Catch 81 Foundation. My number was 81 when I played for the Miami Dolphins, and that's why I came up with Catch 81. It's all for the kid. It's like for the kid. What it does, it benefits kids in South Florida that are underprivileged, underserved. The Seminole Hard Rock selected the O.J. McDuffie Foundation to support because we've watched the enthusiasm and engagement that he has done in our community for the children that he is involved with. Great time. This is a fantastic event. It's a great cause. I just made the best call we've seen in 11 years on the World Poker Network. Right. right here by this guy. Right. I think it's the most important thing, starting with the children first. It's really important because they're our base. If you can get the kids at an early age and get them on the right path at an early age, I think they'll become uh, productive members of society. And if we show them that we care, they'll be able to go out and achieve some of the goals that you know they set out for themselves. We had so much fun being here and playing on behalf of WPT for the Catch 81 Foundation. Met so many great people, and it's always good to help out for a great cause. We all had a great time for a very worthwhile cause. To learn more about WPT's charitable efforts, log on to WPTFoundation.org. The WPT Foundation, playing for a better world. Looks like action is starting back up, so I'll send it down to Mike and Vince. By the way, Mike, I definitely did not trash talk any of the superstars from the NFL. I knew better. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Vince, you got to love O.J. Yeah. McDuffie and what he's doing for the kids <laughs> around here in the Miami area. And you got to love these other football players that come out to support this cause. What a great event it was the other night. Four-handed poker continues here right now. Let's go to the felt. Quick raise by Kevin Eister with a pair of fives. And right behind him, Ben with an ace nine. And Ben is the chip leader now. He just took it over from Kevin Eister. Well, he has re-raised... Around the horn, DePaul's got a pair of fours, but he will fold it. So Ben has raised, now Kevin with the fives. What will he do? Just calling. Well, he re-raised because he knows Kevin can raise on any two cards, so just thought the ace nine might be the best hand. Oh, look at this flop. Three of a kind there for Kevin Eister. Three fives. Oh, great flop for Kevin. He coyly checks them. But Ben checks right behind him. That's a good slowdown by Ben. Here comes the turn. It's a jack of spades. Well, this gives Ben a nut flush draw, the ace high flush draw. Kevin checks again. A nice check by Kevin here because he got his opponent to bite to bet that flush draw. He's got the big four flush. He's betting 200,000. Finally, the check raise coming in by Kevin. Makes it 630,000. This could get very expensive for Ben. Well, it's 430,000 more. Does make the call and hopes to catch the spade. Down to the river. Can Ben get the spade? No, three of diamonds. Well, Kevin's got a full house, five full of threes. Well, you don't want to run your man out by betting too much, perhaps. What can you extract? Well, he's betting 1.1 million. You and Kev. We knew, of course, Ben has nothing, and he says, I give up. He was hoping Ben had paired the jacks on the turn and might pay him off on the river. That didn't happen. So the 23-year-old professional gambler out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, always hope, always hope, hope. Taking this one down. And with it, regains the chip lead. Yeah, nicely done. You know, he's won over 2.5 million online, he says. But let's move on to this hand. A quick fall by Ben Enzo. And now it's around to Paul. Well, Paul's in desperado mode. All these other players got multi-millions in chips. He's got less than one half a million. There you go. He's going all in. And he moves him in right here with a jack nine offsuit. Can't blame him for doing it. Okay. Now Kevin's got ace high, and he's going to make this call. Very solid. Nicely done. He is out in front over Paul. And as the cars lie, Kevin about a three to two favorite to eliminate Paul from this tournament. Let's see if the ace high holds up. There ain't going to be any sweat this one. Ace, ace pops on the, yeah, ace pops on the flop. Ace three versus Jack nine. Paul, first cash, first final table on the World Poker Tour. Can he get lucky here? Nope. That's, that's not a very good club. Austin, I have a club too. Kevin Eister loving that. Very, very bad shape for Paul. He's got to catch two runners to win this pot, two runners to make a straight, <laughs> a running combination yeah, of nines and jacks. That's not a club. Oh, and it is a club. Ten of clubs. That's going to wrap it up for Paul. Well, Paul gets up, knows it's over, 
Zima, fish man. So Paul Dugazima <laughs> from St. Petersburg, Florida, out tonight in fourth place. That is right. He'll take home 171,000, a fine player, and now he's over to talk to Matt Savage. Paul, I saw you back here talking to a world-class player, Elio Fox. Did he tell you to go get it in there? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to help me a little bit. I need some help in some spots, so he uh, he gives me the support where I need it and helps me with uh, when I'm not sure about things. Yeah. You're used to putting players into these tournaments. What's easier, backing or playing? It's much easier backing. You just give them money, let them go do their thing. When they come back, they tell you they won, they lost, and no stress. I mean, obviously, we want them to do well, but I don't have to do anything after I hand them the money, and they, they go off and do their own thing. Well, I'm sure your, uh, your players are going to be looking at your play and then telling you how you did. Yeah. Amanda, back to you. Thanks, Matt. With Paul Dukazima out in fourth place, that brings us to the end of our second hour of extended coverage here in Hollywood, Florida. So guys, it's no surprise that Kevin Eister, who started this final table with the chip lead, is in the final three. But what about Ben and Zoe? Well, you're right, Amanda. No surprise about Kevin Eister. Came to the final table as chip leader. Still the chip leader. Expected to be there. The surprise, of course, to me is Zoe, the guy who came to this final table on the short stack in sixth place. He doubled up three times to stay alive in this tournament. Twice he outdrew his opponents. Vince, to me, that could be an omen that everything is falling in place for Zoe to win this tournament. Zoe won't go. <laughs> Yes, but what about the tattooed man, huh? Ben Tarzia is tough. He's been around this game for a long time. He can play poker. He can win this championship and break up these roommates' beautiful friendship. Thank you, gentlemen. Please join us next time for the conclusion of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown here in Hollywood, Florida. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls, Matt Savage, and the whole WPT team, I'm Amanda Leatherman. Thanks for watching. Good night. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Tonight in Hollywood, Florida, the sun is set, but the poker action is still hot. And one player will add their name to the prestigious WPT Champions Cup. The conclusion of the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown starts now, and it's only on the WPT. Welcome back to South Florida and the conclusion of WPT's Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. I'm Amanda Leatherman sitting in for Kimberly Lansing. In the past two seasons, we've seen Taylor Von Kriegenberg and Tommy Vitas add their names to the WPT Champions Cup in this arena. Tonight, we guarantee you'll see another player earn this great poker honor. As always, we're joined by WPT's own poker experts, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Mike, these players must be so excited to have made it this far in the tournament. Well, I'm sure they're very excited, Amanda, to be there. It's come down to the two youngest players at the table versus the oldest player at the table, one amateur versus two young pros. Certainly no surprise, Kevin Eister is the chip leader. When he came to this final table, he's still the chip leader with three left, but I think the other two guys are really very, very happy to be here. Certainly Zoe, who started this final table in dead last place, he tripled up three times, outdrew his opponent twice to double up along the way. He is feeling great to be alive. And I think the amateur player, the businessman, the guy that owns a tattoo shop, is just thrilled to be in the mix with three players left. And Vince, do you think there's a clear favorite at this point to win? You know, I think I'm going to give the nod to Kevin Eister. He's the chip leader. He's playing excellent poker, very composed. But on top of that, you know, he, he's lost his glasses this week, and he's using only one contact now. He couldn't get both for some reason. So he can't see out of one eye, he told us. So he, he's like one-eyed Eister right now. But that's good at the poker table because you can't see what you're doing, and you just push the chips in. I'm giving him the edge. Thanks, guys. We've gotten word that the action at this final table is ready to continue. Cards are about to fly, so let's get down to the felt. Well, there you see the chip counts. Kevin Eister out in front with 6.8 million. Ben Carzi in second place with 5 million. And Zoe in third place with about 4.4 million. Anybody's game. That's right. The winner's going to take home 660,000 here tonight in Hollywood, Florida. And the Andes are 10,000. The blinds are 40 and 80. Here we go. Action on our chip leader, Kevin Eister. Well, Kevin been by far the most aggressive player at the final table, at least pre-flop, that's for sure. Well, he's made it 160 to go. Ben out. 
the call. But Zoe Karim with the little suited connector is going to make this call. Now, these guys are roommates on the road when they travel to poker tournaments. They room together as they are here. And they're both still left battling out for this title. But it shows you, roommate or not, these guys are playing to try to win the title. Forget about love and roommates right now. Well, the flop comes up 8-4-3, open-ended for Zoe. And he has bet it. Yeah, but look at this. Kevin has made the call with no hand and no draw. It's what we call a float bet. He is going to try to win this pot the first time his opponent checks. King of diamonds on the turn. But look at this. Zoe is not checking the open-end straight draw. He is firing again. Certainly is. Well, Kevin gives it up. You know, that's the problem with the float bet. When your opponent keeps betting at you, it doesn't work. You try to float, but you sink. Wow, did you get there with the king and then just hero fold? No, that'd be real sick. <laughs> that would be terrible. Right now, you can take a look at the WPT stack tracker. Yeah, that indicates the ebb and flow of the chip counts of all the players at this final table. As you can see, Kevin has been pretty steady. He came to the final table as a chip leader. He's still the chip leader. Zoe's the guy that's made the big jump, as you can see. Started on the short stack, and now he's made a big move. Ben been pretty steady up and down a little bit, but the stack tracker indicates where they've been up and down at this final table. All right, onto this hand, Kevin, with a 6-5, gonna make it 160, Ben out. Zo Karim with a king nine, will play with his buddy. Well, the roommates not shy about playing against each other, that's for sure. Flop, queen, jack, four. Zoe's got a gut shot straight draw. He's gonna check. And Kevin with absolute zip and pip, it will make the continuation bet. You gotta respect it, 130. Just got a six high here. And Zoe's going to make the call. Zoe yeah, would love to turn. hit his 10 and punish his friend. But no, it's another jack. Back on, Zoe. So no dough for Zoe. He checks. Kevin reaching for chips again. He knows it's the only way he can win the pot. And he's certainly not just going to give it up. He fights for it. He does make the bet. I mean, the guy looks like that, Vince. No chance he's calling you. Pretty sure I have the best hand still. So. So yeah. Cold. Uh -huh. You do have the best hand, though, but it's tough to call when a guy fires yet another shell at that pot. So the young gambler from Lafayette, Louisiana, extends the chip lead. There's the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar. Yeah, and there's our club qualifier, Can Carl Hutchins, sitting right Hutchins? there with the girls. Yeah, he won his way on clubwpt.com, played in the tournament, so having a great time. But let's get back to this hand. Action on Eister, this time with a king-queen, makes it 160. Ben Tarzia, the tattoo shop owner, will make this call. Got the seven four diamonds. Well, now Zoe knows Kevin could raise on the button with any two cards. The guy in the small blind didn't re-raise it, so he can't be that strong. So look at this. Zoe is going to make the three bet here. I like this play by Zoe. He three bets it with the ace nine offsuit up to 460,000. But Kevin quickly calls with the king queen, and look at this. Ben's Coming along for the ride, right hoping to hit a good flop here. See a flop. This is a three-bet flop, folks, and all three players are in it. Big investment, and the flop comes up queen, 10-7. That's good for Eister, hitting queens. Well, Ben's got bottom pair with two sevens and checks. Okay. Zoe is going to also check. you got to figure check. Kevin's going to bet, but no, he doesn't. He checks. I'm in shock. He checked that hand. Just too many straight That's possibilities out there, and there's one of them. They could give somebody a straight, a nine. Check. Well, Ben's going to check the sevens. and Now Zoe, who's made a pair of nines on the turn, thinking they might be good here. Doesn't want to give somebody a straight draw in case they got a jack in their hand, for example. He's betting 385. And the man with the top pair, Kevin Eister, ben will make this call. Ben, ben flies away. And Zoe looking back, make sure he's got his pair. He better get some help. He wants to win this pot. Down to the river we go. Six of well, a six comes off. Now, that's a four-card straight on the board now. And Zoe, worried his opponent might have an eight in his hand, checks. And look at this. One-eyed Eister going to try to put in a value bet with all those possibilities out there. Pretty incredible. Well, it really is. I mean, what can a guy pay you off with where he can't be two queens? Two nines might be one of those hands. It's a half a million dollars, and he's been called. Well, just incredible. Zoe pays him off with the two nines, so Kevin knows what he's doing. I'll tell you, these roommates know each other's game, Vince. I can tell you that. 
I'm so bad for even calling there. It's like you either have that or ace jack, and not many, many combos. Wow, very impressive by the young Kevin Eister, who says that one of his eyes he can't even see out of today because his contact lens was lost, but maybe that's helping him. Well, you wonder if he saw that four card straight on the board, man. <laughs> 180. All right, onto this hand. Quick fold by Ben, and Zoe is raised to 180. Been called by Kevin with king three. Here we go. Well, flop comes 10, 9, 3. No help for Zoe. As you can see, Kevin's flop bottom pair. Zoe's going to check. And Kevin comes from that Amarillo Slim school of poker. They're a check, and I'm a betting. Well, he's got a little pair of threes, a little piece of it, and he is betting it. He's got the best hand. That's why he's betting. Sure. Of course, he bets when he doesn't have the best hand, too, but... Zoe's called it. There's the one-eyed problem. <laughs> Hasn't been much of a problem tonight. Another heart on the turn. King of hearts. It gives Zoe the ace-high flush draw, the nut flush draw, and he's reaching for chips and going to bet. But as you can see, it gives Kevin top and bottom pair. So he's got two pair. Now there's a three-card flush and a three-card straight on the board. So Kevin, going to play it a little careful, just calls, doesn't re-raise here with the two pair. 330,000 down to the river. Ace of clubs on the river. Well, now, Zoe might think he has the best hand. I would. You'd have thought your opponent would have raised if he had two pair or better. That didn't happen. So Zoe going to try to get a value bet in here for 480,000. A snap call by Kevin with two pair. Zoe proudly displays the aces, but they're not good enough as Kevin has two pair. Just incredible. Kevin against his roommate. Someone sleeping on the cot tonight. Stay with us. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. People don't play real poker on social poker sites because there's nothing to win. On ClubWPT.com, we play real poker for our share of 100000 in real cash and prizes each month. It's real poker for real players. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. I give a lot of stuff away, so it's the one thing I learned, so I just keep sunglasses on. I actually had some Oakleys uh, going into this, but I, those and my regular prescription glasses, along with my shoes, uh, were all in this bag that I got stolen earlier this week, so I no longer can see, and uh, I had to go buy some cheap glasses. I have one contact now. I actually started with two and lost one mid-tournament, so now I got my left one. I'm not wearing it right now, but uh, I will when we play. And I just close one eye and I can see the flop. <laughs> Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Three players remain. Well, one-eyed poker is working, Vince. The guy's got a monster chip lead, as you can see, over 10 million in chips. More than twice as many chips as the other two put together, just about. Pretty incredible stuff for a guy that says he can't see. Maybe you're better off if you can't see the flops and stuff. Just fire. Well, action's on him. This time he has ace high. He makes it 160 to go. Now Ben behind him with a pair of jacks. But he's just going to call. Incredible. He does not re-raise with the jacks. And so going out. Would this be a big mistake by Ben? We will see. And look at this flop for Kevin Eister. How good is this guy running? He flops us straight here. This could spell doom for Ben, the Canadian. Ben checks the over pair. And Eister bets. Gonna come out and bet 140. Oh, a man. And Ben has got the over pair, but just calling. Yeah, does not check raise here like I thought he would with that flop. Here comes the turn. Well, now a queen comes out. That's an over card. So Ben not gonna like that. He's gonna check. And here we go. Kevin betting again. And Ben calling again. Down to the river. When a king comes off, well, Vince, Ben checks again, but that card could save him money. He'll be afraid that Kevin hit a king or a queen here to beat his jacks. Look at this, Kevin betting 800,000. Well, he's all choked up here right now, but those last two cards could save his life literally in this tournament. I mean, after that flop, it looked like there was no way he wasn't going broke with two jacks here. This would be a nice lay down at this point, and he is, looks like he's... You win, kid. Got to do the right thing, lets it go. Well, he does lay it down, but I'm still wowed. He has chips left with two jacks there. He's up, Mike. We are watching great action again in South Florida. It always is good at the Seminole Harbor. Oh, you're right, Vince. And just watching these players duke it out and fight with roommates and all the rest just makes you want to get in the game. <laughs> 
tell you something, everyone else feels the same way. Many people practice their game and they really enjoy the poker that's being played on clubwpt.com. And it's also available on both PC and Mac. Now personally, I love the great virtual items you can share with your friends while you play. You know what else they can enjoy on clubwpt.com? They enjoy a lot of benefits. They get access to old WPT episodes, copies of WPT poker magazines. And you can also win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes. Like Carl Hutchins in Northern Kentucky, he won the seat to this event. He had a great time. Well, Carl is proof that you don't have to spend a fortune to have a great poker experience. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. All right, back to the table we go. And the antes are now 15,000, Mike. Blinds are 50 and 100, here we go. Well, action's on Ben, he's on the button. And looks down at a 10-9 offsuit, but he sees these guys raising every time on the button, so he's gonna do it too. 225, Zoe goes out. Kevin Eister, though, with a pretty solid ace-nine of spades, making this call. Here comes the flop. Well, Jack, three deuce. Kevin's gonna check, and here comes a continuation bet by Ben with just 10 high. 250,000. Now Kevin makes the call with the ace high. Turn card, deuce of diamonds. And board pairs, deuces again, Kevin checks. And Ben firing a second shell at this pot with no hand, no draw, no nothing. And what a call by Kevin here. Call him because he thinks the ace high might be the best hand. In fact, it is. And the last card is a five of diamonds, and Ben just gives up, checks it. If a guy's good enough to call me on the turn, he'll call me on the river. I'm going to save my chips. Best hand. But how about those calls by Kevin there to take down that pot? Very strong. Vince, all this guy's doing is stacking chips here. This has just been a one-man band here in this three-handed battle. Swap life. <laughs> Swap life. And his roommate, Zoe, saying something I don't understand, but looks fun. It's Swamp Life. The guy's from Louisiana, so... Oh, that's what he was saying. Maybe huh? that's his time, Vince. Okay. <laughs> you know, he's a Cajun. That's what they do down there. They get in the swamps. Two roommates in a great position to take back all the money here tonight at the Hard Rock. But with this hand, Zoe quickly folds. Kevin's finally got a real hand here. I'm sure he's gonna raise with this. He's raised with all the junk hands. Sure does, makes it 250 to go. Ben behind him. I'm all in. Okay. This is all in, quick call by Kevin. Well, you can't blame Ben for going all in here. Kevin's got ace jack against the ace to eight. I fold the king eight. 90% of the time tonight, that ace high would have been the best hand against this Kevin. Now Ben's gotta get very lucky to win this pot. And remember, Zoe folded a king eight, so one of his outs is gone. Well, I think Ben's thinking back, saying, I should have pushed the jacks. I probably would have won. Little does he know. But here comes the flop. It's a queen, three, four. That's not good for Ben Tarzia. Ben's going to have to catch an eight to win this pot. Nothing else is going to do it. They would split the pot if the board paired twice. Here comes the turn. Ooh, it's a 10. Well, we are down to the river. Ben Tarzia from Maple, Ontario, Canada, must catch an eight on the river to stay alive in this tournament. Hit the board. Hit the board. Looks like the ink has dried for the tattooed shop owner. And remember, Zoe threw an eight away, so things are looking very bad for the Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, he got it! An eight! He got it! Oh, my golly! Yeah! A snowman on the river. Melts away some chips of Kevin Eister there. Wow, the crowd stunned at the river card that came up for Ben there. We need it. That was my favorite hand growing up. Ace eight. This really goes because I folded the king. Our third hour of coverage from WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown in Hollywood, Florida is just getting started and we have a lot more to come. Tony Dunst has been gearing up to give his two cents in the raw deal and we'll watch the Royal Flush girls slide into action here in sunny Florida. It's coming up, don't go away. The WPT Foundation is dedicated to supporting great charities around the world. Now you can help the WPT Foundation raise money for some great global causes. Check out all the incredible prizes, trips, and VIP experiences available through our online auctions at WPTFoundation.org. Welcome back to our extended coverage of the final table of the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Our Tony Dunst has been watching from the sidelines and is ready to pipe in with some thoughts in this yeah. edition of The Raw Deal. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's common to bet the flop is a bluff, with the intention of following through with more barrels on later streets. Yet sometimes the board falls in such a way that you have to pull out of those bluffs. And nothing makes a bluffer second guess like the board pairing. But are there situations where the board pairs and you should keep firing? Let's break it down. First, we watch Kevin Eister get the best of Zoe Kareem when he raises the button with 6-5 offsuit and makes a continuation bet on a flop of four queen jack. Zoe makes the call in the big blind with his gut shot and overcard. The turn is the jack of diamonds, and when Zoe checks, Kevin follows through with a half pot bet that gets Zoe to fold. Pretty sure I had the best hand, so. Kevin wins. Then we watch Ben Tarzia raise the button with 10-9 and get a call from Kevin Eister in the big blind with ace-9. Kevin doesn't hit the flop and checks, but casually calls a bet from Ben on the jack-deuce-three flop. The turn brings the deuce of diamonds, and when Kevin checks, Ben follows through with a second bet that's 30% pot. Kevin makes the call, again with just ace high. When the river comes a five, both players check, and Kevin wins with ace high. Now, here's the difference between those two bluffs. In the first hand, Kevin bets on a turn that he can more plausibly represent, as he would likely raise the button with most hands containing a jack. He knows much of Zoe's range contains draws, which all decreased in value with the board pairing. Now, in the hand where Ben bets the turn with his 10 high against Kevin, he does it on a deuce, which is hard to represent since most hands containing a deuce fold pre-flop. Beyond the unlikely deuce, the uncoordinated flop texture makes it far more likely that Kevin is calling with showdown value instead of a draw. So it's probable that Kevin will continue calling with that showdown value when the turn doesn't change the texture of the board. Particularly with the price Ben gave Kevin with his small bet, he was never going to get a fold from ace high while a bet of double that size might have worked. So when you bluff the flop and the turn pairs the board, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to attempt the old pull-out method, but it does mean you should reconsider whether that card really changes the texture and affects your opponent's hand. And in the event a deuce pairs a deuce, it's probably a check. I don't even have to see the rest of the hand to know that. Well, we know it's important to bet size properly when you're bluffing. Tony Dunn's nailing it again, but we're back to the table. Three players remain. Kevin Eister, the 23-year-old out of Louisiana, the chip leader. And the blinds are 50 and 100,000. Action on Zoe Kareem. Man, looks down at the king nine of diamonds. Not a bad hand on the button in a three-handed game. So Zoe reaching for raising chips. Yep, he makes it 200,000 to go. Kevin out. And ben with the 6-4 hearts, gonna make the call. Ben Tarzia, good friends with Daniel Negrano, another Canadian. And look at this, he's hit three of a kind. Just a great flop for Ben right there. He checks. Here comes the spider in the web. Zo bets 125. Ben with a huge hand, gonna try to trap, just calling. Oh. Another six comes off, quads for the Canadian. Yep, he checks again. Zoe looks up and looks at him and says, I'm slowing down. I'm not betting for you. Zoe knows his opponent could have had a straight draw. Now there's no hand he can beat. Doesn't matter what he had. When he called on the flop, he knows that. He quickly gets out of the pot when his opponent bets here. But Such a bad river for me. Probably on so many others. The only hand he could have possibly beat was a gut shot straight draw on the flop. But when the eight paired, he made the straight. Nice made the full house. It was. Made something that beat him. Well, Mike, we have truly been enjoying the poker here at the final table of the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. But season 11 of the World Poker Tour has been going full gear all around the world. Well, that's right, Vince. And since we last saw our viewers, a great non-televised WPT main event took place in Spain at Casino Barcelona. Congratulations to Shashan Racy Kuhn, who took the title of WPT Barcelona. That's right, and that's not all. Season 11 is action-packed, as you know, with both WPT regional events and WPT national events. These WPT caliber tournaments offer accessible buy-ins worthy of the WPT name. Overseas WPT nationals were held at Casino Marbella in Spain, La Croissette Casino in Cannes, France, and down in Johannesburg, South Africa, Sean Gavinder won the Emperor's Palace Poker Championship. Congratulations to all our winners. And to find out more about upcoming WPT events, log on to WPT.com. Now, 
back to the action at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Well, there you see the chip count. Kevin Eister well out in front with about 9.8 million. Ben Tarzi in second place with 3.6 million. And Zoe Kareem in third place with 2.8 million. Zoe Kareem out of Orlando, Florida. First to act, quickly folds his hand, but behind him, one eyed Eister with an ace queen. Well, Kevin now picking up some cards. He was winning pots without cards earlier. Now he's getting some. Yeah, makes it 250 to go. Ben with a little suited connector. Will speculate, makes this call. Oh, nice flop for Kevin. Ace, Jack, eight. He's flopped top pair. His opponent's flopped bottom pair. And Kevin will make the continuation bet with the goods. 250,000. Ben doesn't believe him. Well, Ben's going to make the call here with the two eights. Fourth Street will be a seven. Two pair for Ben. Dream card for Ben right there. Well, Kevin's checking in case his opponent might have had a 9-10 also. Well, Ben is going to bet it's half a million. Well, I don't see Kevin going anywhere with the aces and the queen kicker here. <clears throat> He's making his call like he should. River card will be. Well, a 10 comes off, so a four card straight on the board. And it goes check, check here. Kevin shows the aces. Not good enough as Ben tables the two pair. So the tattoo shop owner, Ben Tarzia, winning back a good one. Could it be an omen for Ben to take this title? We'll see. Stay with us. We'll be back with more exciting action on the World Poker Tour right after this. Season 11 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. The pool here at Seminole Hard Rock is really awesome. The pool has a really tropical feel to it. It has a huge waterfall a big slide and just very beautiful. When we do our shoots, we do some together, which is us just you know, laughing and being ourselves and you know what we do pretty much all the time. And then we have our individual solo shots. And mine was kind of laying back in the pool with my hair in the water looking all fab. And some of the girls were crawling in the sand getting all dirty. And some girls were climbing rocks and getting all sporty. So there's a little bit of everything. On the first day of our photo shoot by the poolside, the weather wasn't so kind to us. It held up for the first few hours, and afterwards, it decided to just pour down. So we made the most of it. We did like a little rain dance out there and just got a little wet. Welcome back to the Seminole Hard Rock Casino and the World Poker Tour. Well, the pool is just one of the great facilities here at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino. And Vince, I got to say, the girls sure look good in the pool. Well, we've been having a great time all week long, but let's get back down to the felt. Zoe Kareem with a nice hand, ace queen. Going to raise it on the button here to 210,000. Kevin out, and Ben with the king queen is going to call. Blinds of 50 and 100. And the flop is an ace-king-jack. Just a great flop for Zoe. Both players have an ace-eye straight draw. Ben's got kings, Zoe's got aces, and he's betting. But a quick call by Ben. This could be trouble for Ben. Five of spades on the turn. Well, Ben checks again. So reaching for betting chips one more time. 380,000 is the bet. Look at this. Ben going to throw it away and show it to him, Vince, which is going to upset Zoe even more. You're dead to another king. Dead to a king, he said. How do you fold the turn there? How do I fold the turn? Yeah. Like, you're supposed to call and give me at least 375 more. All right, a great hand for Zoe Kareem. Now, remember, Zoe started this final table as the short stack, and remarkably, he still survives with just three players to go. Yeah, Zoe's success at tonight's event reminds me of what we saw poker pro Tommy Vitas accomplish last season here at the Seminole Hard Rock. At the time, it was something that only Phil Locke and Alex Gomez have achieved in WPT history. Tommy's story is the best of season 10 moment. The final table of the season 10 Seminole Hard Rock showdown started with poker pro Joe Sirock in the chip lead with 3.1 million. And Tommy Vitas 
with a short stack of a little less than 600,000. He's not cooking breakfast here, so there's no short stack. Doesn't help him. That's what he is. I'm all in. Cool. Early action saw Tommy double through Kyle Bowker. Kyle hanging in there. Which eventually led to Kyle's demise in sixth place. Then Tommy faced off with local high stakes grinder Sharon Levin. Tommy first makes a great call on the river to increase his stack. Sharon Levin sickened by that. On the very next hand, Tommy finished the job with pocket sixes. Very cool. Sending Sharon to the rail in fifth place while sending Tommy up the leaderboard. Soon after, pro Craig Bergeron shoved with pocket sixes. On. As Tommy woke up with Queens. On. The pair of ladies held up, knocking Craig out of the tournament. The very dapper Craig Bergeron out in fourth place. And moving the once short stack Tommy into second chip position. Next, it was Joe Sirock who hit the rail in third place, putting Tommy heads up to fight for the title. John Dolan started the heads up match with the advantage in chips, but Tommy had no intention of giving up. I want to get a heads up, by the way. Tommy quickly doubled up when he flopped a flush. It can't beat that defense. And when they both hit top pair, while Tommy held the better kicker, he doubled up yet again. Now is our chip leader just incredible. The final hand of the night would prove exciting. Come on. Cool. As Tommy had an ace 10, and he called John's all in who held king six, making him a two to one dog. The flop would give John two pair, putting him way out in front. Come on, come on, come on. But Tommy had outs. Tommy has a straight draw. A queen would give him an ace high straight. Wow. A queen on the turn makes Broadway for Tommy. With a brick on the river, Tommy Vetus became the champion. It really is unbelievable. Tommy Vetus, who entered this final table with the shortest stack, is leaving tonight with his second WPT title. A great feat and easily the best comeback of season 10. You know, Vince, Tommy's win here last season gave him his second WPT title, and since then, we've seen one more player make the jump from sixth place to first. That was Ravi Raghavan, who took his first WPT title when he won the Five Diamond World Poker Classic earlier this year at Bellagio. Well, it is definitely a rare feat, but not impossible. And actually, we could see it happen again here tonight with Zoe Kareem. Three players left. The cards are back in play. Let's get down to the felt. Well, Ben's got the Jack-8 offsuit. Going to raise on the button. Makes it 210000 to go. Zoe Kareem with a quick fold, but Kevin's going to call with an ace four, and the flop comes up Jack-10-6. Oh, nice flop for Ben. He's flopped top pair here. And he is going to bet a quarter of a million here after Kevin checks. Kevin hitting none of that. But look at this. He's going to get creative, powering through with a raise. Check raising to 700000 Now well, Ben's got top pair. Doesn't have a great kicker, but... All right, kid, you win. He's going to fold two jacks here. Now, his opponent didn't re-raise before the flop, so you know he doesn't have aces, kings, or queens. Even an ace jack he would raise with. I am shocked Ben folded that hand, Vince, to an aggressive player like Kevin Eister. I think that's the first mistake Ben has realistically made. He's made a lot of great moves tonight. Very shrewd that he's still around. Let me tell you another mistake he makes, Vince. He makes a mistake by showing these guys those hands. He showed a king queen a minute ago. Yep. He showed this hand here that he laid it down. He showed the two jacks when he lost that pot where he never re-raised it earlier. You just can't show those hands to these aggressive players. They'll run over you. I can't imagine how many cards he's going to have to catch to win this tournament if he keeps showing them those kind of hands. Well, look at this. A pair of aces for Zoe in the very next hand. After a quick fold by Ben, now Zoe will make it 215000 and pray that he gets action from his roommate, Kevin, who has a pretty decent king-queen. Who's going over the top? He's getting action, all right. He's getting three bet, up to 485000 Look at this grimacing. It's the show tunes going off in Zoe's head, yet he's he's acting. Well, Vince, he wants to make a raise where his opponent can't really afford to lay his hand down, meaning he's not going to make a large raise here because he doesn't want Kevin to go anywhere. You would think sometimes a guy wants to just play it a little slower, disguise it, and just call. Yeah, he could just call. But he's not going to. He's going to make that nice little gentle raise, as we like to say. He's raising 330000 here with a million in the pot. Just a brilliant play by him in my mind. And Kevin calls it. And he's got the fish hooked. And we're going to flop. It's... Oh, he could really be hooked now, Vince. Yep. As it comes, king, five, three. 
Kevin has flopped top pair, but Zoe has the only over pair of the two aces that's got him beat. Oh, and he's going to massage a bet of 685000 into his roommate, buddy. Insta call, of course, by Kevin. Kevin and we're call. going to the turn. This could get very expensive. This could be a great double up for Zoe. Let's see. Tana Spade comes off. That is perfect for Zoe. Everything working out just fine. All in. All in. He's going all in here, fearful his opponent might have a diamond draw. I'll call. Whoa, boy. He gets a quick call. Well, he's hoping he had the kings. That's exactly the case. And with one card to go, Kevin must catch a king or a queen to win this pot. Zoe knows he'll take the chip lead after starting out in sixth place if his aces hold up here. Wow. What a spot for Zoe. They make queens. It's just, it's just what they make. Big moment for Zoe. Big chance to double up. But if the miracle should be pulled off by Kevin, if he hits a king or a queen, Zoe would be out in third place. Unlikely to happen, but you never know. A queen. Unbelievable. Wow. Zoe gets two aces. He played the hand perfectly. He got outdrawn on the river. I called it, brother. I called your eight and I called your queen. Zoe finally goes, but Vince had to crack two aces to get him out of here. Tough luck for Zoe right there. He'll be our third place finisher, and he'll be thinking about that hand for a long time, Vince. Devastating defeat there. What a river card. Zoe will take home $252,000. He's got to be a little depressed as he walks over to Matt Savage, our WPT Executive Tournament Director. So a tough way to go. Starting off with aces and losing that hand has to be very tough. But you lost it to your friend. Now, how does that change the dynamic with you playing against your friend? Uh, I really don't think it changed it too much. Um, I mean, we're both playing to win, so we know that. I mean, this is just a game. We're going to be friends off the felt regardless. So. Uh, it's just how it goes. You can hang around, sweat, oh, Kevin. Happen. Of course. All right, congratulations. Amanda, back to you. Thanks, Max. With Zoe Cream out in third place, we are now heads up with Kevin Eister and Ben Tarzia getting ready to battle for the title. Heads up action brought to you by ClubWPT.com is next. Unbelievable. What is going on here tonight? What are we seeing here? This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by Vegas.com. Vegas.com. Do Vegas right. As is the custom on the World Poker Tour, when we get down to heads up play, we have our money presentation. So show us the money! And right now, the beautiful Royal Flush Girls are bringing out the cold hard cash here at the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. That is Tuba and Ivy. And of course, Angelique and Danielle. Well, over a million dollars they're putting on the table. That's what these two guys are gonna take home between them. Big payday and an opportunity for each of these guys to win their first WPT title. And put their name on the Champions Cup right there. We started with 542 players. We are down to these two very gifted and talented players. One's a so-called amateur, the other a young guy from Lafayette, Louisiana, a professional poker player, 23 years old, Kevin Eister. Heads up action here at the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown is about to get underway between Kevin Eister and Ben Tarzia. During the break, Matt Savage had a chance to speak with both players. Ben, you said you were a winner already by just making the final table. Now you're one step away from 660000 and putting your name on the Champions Cup. How do you feel? I feel great, man. Um, I'm hoping destiny's on my side. Well, you say you're playing for your family, and I'm sure they're very proud of you right now. Your four friends, your kids are, have to be extremely happy that you're in this spot. Are you playing for them? 
Absolutely, man. It's more for them than it is for me. Uh, all my sons, my three sons, are sitting there by the computer, and I just spoke to them now. And they're, uh, I couldn't hear a word they're saying because they're screaming so loud. <laughs> so it's a good feeling. Well, that's awesome. One more step to go. Maybe you put your name right on that cup. I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> good luck. Thanks. Well, does this feel like some kind of validation for you? You have a lot of online wins, but this is your first chance to put your name on the Championships Cup of the World Poker Tour. I mean, is it something you've looked forward to in your career? Uh, yeah, I mean, growing up watching on the TV and just seeing a lot of familiar f f uh, faces winning over and over, you know, I always wanted to be one of those guys. So now I have a shot, one of two shots to do it. So. Well, now your head's up with the chip lead. Good luck to you. Thank you. The WPT Champions Cup is primed for a new addition. So let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. Well, there you see the chip counts as we start out heads up play. Kevin Eister with over 13 million in chips. Ben Tarzia with just over three million in chips, so a healthy chip lead by the youngster Kevin Eister. All right, Andy's at 20,000, Mike. Blind 60, 120. Here we go. Action on Ben. He's got the button. He's got 9, 10. He's going to get aggressive and raise. Makes it 250 to go. But right behind him, one eyed Eister. He lost his contact lens. <laughs> so he says he's only seeing out of one eye. He's got ace queen. Well, he sees enough to re raise right here. Makes it 650,000 to go. Ben quickly goes out. So Kevin extends his chip lead. Yep, Kevin out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Only 23 years old. With a chance of a lifetime to be a champion on the WPT. On to the second hand of heads up action. Kevin this time with a nothing hand, just a 5'10. Will raise, makes it 240 to go. Come on. Man. Wow, Ben moving all in here with a queen jack. I mean, Kevin has a junk hand. He's got to throw it away, of course. But what a bold play by Ben. I think he realizes he's going to have to play big pots against this guy to beat him. He's not going to beat him playing small ball. Uh, he is bringing out the pins and needles and tattooing his man with just queen high. Super aggressive. Just incredible. Ben says he was a suit for 20 years, a sales executive. He got rid of that lifestyle, opened up a tattoo shop, loves his life, has four kids, loves the family. Where is it? And loves playing poker. Well, he's got ace deuce this time. He's making it 2-6 to go. Kevin behind him with a call. King nine. We're going to see a flop. Ace deuce versus king nine. And the flop is a jack 10-3. Kevin's got a gut shot straight draw. And look at this. He's leading right into the pre-flop raise events. 280,000. And Ben throwing his hand away. So a nice bet there by Kevin to take down that pot. Well, one-eyed Eister certainly can't see because he didn't have much there. Bets nevertheless, and he will take this one down. Well, he has been aggressive and overly aggressive all night long, and it certainly paid off for him. Look at this. An ace just like that, and a ten of clubs. Big hand for Kevin. He's going to raise. Makes it 240 to go. Into Ben. Has a pair of sevens. Come on, man. Going to ship it here. I don't blame him. I'd do the same thing. Okay. And there he does it. I think you have to call in this spot with this chip count. No doubt about it. We got a race situation. Kevin wins the race. He'll be our champion. If Ben wins it, he'll be a force to be reckoned with, perhaps. And there is Ben's cousin. Well, in my mind, this is a great thing for Ben to get in a race situation where he can double up and have substantial chips if he wins the pot. Still won't have the chip lead, but be right in the thick of things. All right, five cards to come. Can Ben Tarzia get lucky? Yes! Ace right on the flop. Ace five deuce, the ace hits. One on Eister. He's out in front with aces. But Ben has a flush draw. So if a heart comes up, Ben would make a flush and win this pot. He needs a seven or a heart to stay alive in the tournament. Turned card coming up. Can he hit his heart? No, it's a five of clubs. So Ben must catch a seven or a heart to stay alive in this tournament. Otherwise, Kevin Eister will be our champion. Heart, heart, Can Eister do it? And the river card. Heart! It is a 10, a 10 comes off aces and tens for Kevin Eister. Now the Cajun takes it down. Kevin Eister with his first WPT title came to the final table as chip leader. <laughs> took home the trophy. Hugs and tears at this final table as Kevin is the champ. You got the better hand going in, bro. That's it? That's all you can do. Can't do any better than that. A bridesmaid again. A good sport, our runner-up. Whoa, that's pretty Look, tight. Look, man. Look, man. I didn't stare at it too Look, hard. Look, man. Yeah. 
Kevin Eisler, a 23-year-old, is the WPT champion. And right now, our runner-up is talking to Matt Savage. Well, Ben, unfortunately, you didn't get to add your name to that Champions Cup. But I do feel like there's two winners here tonight. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. I, I couldn't be more pleased with the results. Um, he's a great player. I'm just happy to be here and happy to have a chance to play with these guys. So, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, nothing's lost. Believe me, nothing's lost here. Well, I'm sure you did your family proud tonight. Mike, over to you. We're with the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown champion, Kevin Eister. Congratulations. Thank you. We salute you on your victory. You came to the final table as chip leader. Did you have a strategy coming to this final table as to how you wanted to play? Uh, no, I just figured I'd see how people were playing back and just work from there and just wing it from there. So. Well, certainly, obviously, the one key in for you, you got lucky to make kings and queens on the river against mm -hmm. Zoe. Yeah. But other than that, you were in total control all night long at this final table. Vince and I thought you played fantastic. Thank you're you. a well-deserving champion. Congratulations. Thanks. In addition to all the money that you're going to make, your name is now going to be inscribed forever on this WPT yeah. Champions yeah. Cup. Yeah. Congratulations. We'll see you at the Thank WPT you, World Champions. Amanda, awesome. back to you. Congratulations to Kevin Eister, the Season 11 WPT Seminole Hard Rock Showdown Champion. Kimberly Lansing will be back next time as we travel to Bellagio in Las Vegas for the 100,000 buy-in WPT World Championship Super High Roller. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and the whole WPT team, I'm Amanda Leatherman. Thanks for watching. Good night. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In Las Vegas, the epicenter of high-stakes poker is pushing the game to astonishing levels as a group of elite players risk a whopping $100,000 in a quest to earn over a million. Tonight, it's the Super High Roller, and it's only on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loudmouth out. Oh! Wow! Unbelievable! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Las Vegas. I'm Kimberly Lansing. For the past 11 seasons, the WPT has covered some of the best and richest poker tournaments right here at Bellagio. And while there's always risk and reward in poker, nothing compares to the nosebleed stakes associated with the WPT Super High Roller, where the price to play is $100,000. Last season, poker pro Thomas Marchese took that massive risk and won the first fully televised WPT Super High Roller event. This season, Thomas was just one of the brave players who walked into the Bellagio poker room ready to pony up the 100K. 100K is a ton of money for everybody, so everyone wants to only play if the field's decent in that it's like pretty big and that it's also just has some like recreational players in it and it's not all pros. I don't know if there's a magic number, but you know, I'd like there to be at least like, you know, 15, 20 players. I run a business. This event's a three-day event. I can spare three days, I can spare the money, I'm going. The wait was not long before the players took their seats for some high stakes excitement on day one. And our very own Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, and the Royal Flush Girls kicked off the event. Allow me to welcome you to the season 11 Super High Rollers Tournament at Bellagio in Las Vegas, Nevada. And gentlemen, let's shovel up and deal. Hearing those words, Jason Mercier couldn't wait for that magic number and made a trip to the cage to get in on the action. Uh, you know, it just looks like fun. I can't, I can't let these guys play without me. A second table was started when WPT champion Eric Seidel joined the growing field. Businessman and high stakes tournament regular Kerry Katz and two-time WPT champion Mad Marvin Rettenmeyer also entered the mix. I'm in gambling mood. Taking an early chip lead was David Doc Sands, who won two large pots against Marvin Rettenmeyer and Andrew Lucky Chewy Lichtenberger. Yeah, definitely got some good cards and made a few good plays along the way, so off to a good start here in the 100K. Registration remained open for entries as more players took the 100K plunge, including WPT World Champion Yevgeny Tymoshenko and Stephen Silverman, who just cashed in the WPT World Championship 
on the other side of the poker room. You know, I, I guess I like to be a hard worker and you know, another tournament's going on, so plus you know, I just got the chips for my cash, so I figured I'd just keep it going. While Steven was getting ready to play, Eric Seidel and Yevgeny Tomashenko found themselves heads up on a flop of Jack 6-5. Eric let out with a bet holding pocket aces, and Yevgeny simply called with a set of jacks. A six on the turn paired the board, and Eric slowed down, check calling Yevgeny's bet. With a deuce on the river, Yevgeny fired again, and after some deliberation, Eric made the call and was surprised to see Yevgeny's nut full house. A few hands later, Eric Seidel, the inaugural WPT Super High Roller Champion, was the first in the field to be eliminated and he slinked off into the casino, perhaps contemplating his option to re-enter. Marvin Rettenmeyer, who started out the day on the wrong foot, tangled with last season's WPT Super High Roller runner-up, Andrew Robel. On a board of Queen Jack 7, Marvin pushed his chips all in with an over pair of kings, and Andrew made the call with top pair. A deuce fell on the turn and an eight on the river, giving Mad Marvin the well-timed double up. But luck was not on the side of businessman and amateur poker player Kerry Katz, who was the second player to hit the rail at Bellagio. Down but not out, Andrew Lichtenberger, currently on the short stack, seemed to have the right mindset to get his game back on track. Going to the last level of the day, it's not going great. I have a little less than a third of starting stack. Just part of the game, sometimes you get short, so I'm just gonna do my best to run it back up. And even though the reigning WPT Super High Roller Champion Thomas Marchese recently doubled up, he was still short on chips and eventually found himself at the mercy of Jason Mercier and was the third player to be eliminated from the field. Thomas was pretty disappointed at the outcome with no plans of re-entering. Faring well were businessmen Robert Mercer and Bill Klein as well as last season's runner-up, Andrew Robel, who all found spots to chip up. In one of the final hands of the day, Marvin Rettenmeyer got all his chips in with King Queen and was called by Yevgeny Timoshenko, who had him dominated with Ace King. The board ran out with all low cards, sending the pot to Yevgeny and Mad Marvin to the rail, though he didn't seem so mad. At the end of the day, players were bagging their chips, and Yevgeny was not ready to go home. I feel really good. I, I'm actually kind of disappointed play ended because I was on a bit of a rush for pretty much the entire day, and I wanted to keep that going. Luck's all gone. No luck for tomorrow. <laughs> Something you don't want to do in tournaments is use all your luck on day one. The 11 players who finished the day in the $100,000 buy-in WPT Super High Roller all hope to have luck on day two. Young pros Steven Silverman and Yevgeny Tomashenko currently sat at the top of the leaderboard, but with stakes so high and a lot of play ahead, it was still anybody's game. With registration still open, will anyone new show up on day two? And will anyone take the ultimate plunge and risk another 100K to re-enter? We'll find out when we return to the WPT Super High Roller at Bellagio. Welcome back to season 11's extended coverage of the WPT Super High Roller at Bellagio. With registration still open and day two about to start, all eyes were on who might still show up and who might double down and re-enter, putting another $100,000 at risk. Players were readying themselves for the long battle ahead on day two, including last season's fifth place finisher, Bill Klein. We're at the high roller event, day two, so just getting started, down to two tables. Uh, I am the short stack, who's gonna grind it out, hope I catch a couple of cards. Pretty optimistic. Also feeling optimistic was day one casualty, Carrie Katz, who decided to fire another very expensive bullet. Ah, uh, just back for more views. Jason Mercier was the first casualty of the day, but he didn't go home empty-handed as he got a $100,000 hug from the Royal Flush Girls. Give him a big hug. You had to cheer him up somehow and make him feel a little better. I told him you can always rebuy, so hopefully we'll see him again. Without much contemplation, Jason got right back in the mix. Yeah, I'm rebuying. All right, get, get the camera out of my face. 
No, I'm just kidding. While Jason was taking his seat for the second time, some players were taking their seat for the first time, including season nine ones to watch Joseph Chung, who was looking to parlay on his previous night's good fortune. I played some baccarat last night. I won a good amount of money, and I'm feeling pretty lucky, yeah. To make up for lost time, Joseph immediately moved all in against Carrie Katz, who didn't want to risk his newly bought chips and open folded pocket jacks. Then Joseph pushed all in on the river against Yevgeny Tomashenko, who eventually makes the call. Oh. Joseph turned over a straight, Yevgeny promptly mucked his hand, and Joseph was off and running on day two. Businessman Ray Faltinsky, the most recent player to join the field, did not get off to the same strong start when he called an all-in of last season's fourth place finisher, Dan Perper. Dan doubled up, and Ray took a hit on one of his very first hands. Soon after, Andrew Lucky Chewy Lichtenberger busted to Michigan businessman Jim Courtney. When asked if he was to re-enter, his answer was short and sweet. No. Eric Seidel decided to take another shot and re-enter. I'm just a uh, stone cold sucker. As Eric took his seat for the second time, the bust outs would continue, including Jean-Noel Thorell and Bill Klein. How's it? Not that smooth. <laughs> also sent to the rail was Carrie Katz, whose ace king was no match to Eric Seidel's pocket jacks and Kerry ran out faster than his second speeding bullet. Was he coming back for a third shot? Good luck, guys. No, nope. he just forgot his water. But French businessman Jean-Noël Thorell did decide to give this tournament a second shot. Welcome back. Not long after he sat back down, Jean-Noël got tangled in a hand with Jason Mercier. After seeing a flop of 8-7-3, Jason checked his top pair and Jean-Noël bet holding an over pair of queens. Jason moved all in over the top and when he was called by Jean-Noël, he still had outs to survive. But with an ace on the turn and a queen on the river, Jason's fate was sealed and he was eliminated by the Frenchman. Yeah, I'm done. I can't afford it anymore. Too much pain in one day. Registration and the window for re-entries was now closed and the money was all counted up. The WPT Super High Roller had a total of 21 entries and a prize pool of over $2 million. Stakes were high with over a million going to first place and only the top three spots getting paid, making this the largest money bubble in WPT history. Play resumed with players converging to one table and David Sands had some thoughts on the remaining field. I mean, this is a hundred thousand dollar buy-in tournament. You know, everyone's good, and I think one of the biggest mistakes a poker player, an athlete, or really any competitor can make is underevaluate their opponents. So I have a ton of respect for all the eight players at my table, and you know, they're all very dangerous. At this stage in the game, every hand was crucial, and young pro Steven Silverman jumped into the chip lead after turning a flush against last season's runner-up Andrew Robel. But Steven's lead would not last long, as just a few hands later, Lucky Joseph Chung took over Lucky River. when he crippled. John Noel Thorell, who would soon after fall in ninth place. And the two remaining short stacks, Eric Seidel and Yevgeny Timoshenko, battled to not only chip up, but to secure a seat under the WPT's bright lights. Yevgeny moved all in on the button with Jack Three of Hearts and was called by Eric holding Ace Six. Yevgeny flopped a pair of jacks, but they were no match for Eric's trip sixes. Yevgeny was drawing very slim until a miraculous jack hit on the river, oh. giving him a bigger full house, keeping his tournament hopes alive. Eric, however, was crippled and would be eliminated on the next hand in eighth place. Yevgeny was trying to build some momentum when he moved all in with pocket threes, but right behind him, Businessman Jim Courtney made the call with pocket kings. The board ran out and Jim's kings would hold up to eliminate Yevgeny in seventh place. After the world champion's exit, the TV final table was set. 
with a businessman, an online grinder, two WPT super high roller repeat performers, and two former ones to watch, all looking to make it to the top three spots so they will not go home empty handed. With our elite group of six players settling into our final table, we turn to our own Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton and Hollywood cash game expert and tennis champion Vince Van Patten. Mike, how does play in a super high roller event differ from what we normally see at a WPT main televised event? Well, Kimberly, it's different in that only three. I'm um, in and out. You've enjoyed this game for a long time, 58 years, but tonight you're up against young pros. How does your game measure up? Well, we're going to find out real quick, man. I'll tell you that right now. So far, it's measured up all right. All right. Well, good luck to you, Jim. Thank you very Kimberly, much. Kimberly, back it. to you. Okay, thanks, Matt. The biggest money bubble in WPT history is about to take place as six men take their seats, but only three will cash. Tonight's winner will earn over $1 million and take home the exclusive WPT Super High Roller Trophy. All the excitement is about to start. Mike and Vince will be back with the call of the game right after this. Season 11 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Welcome back to Bellagio and the WPT Super High Roller. Poker is an extremely interesting game. Um, it seems kind of simple on the surface, but once you really start thinking about it, it gets really complex. Poker is just a fun game because it's a competitive game, it's a mental game. I like challenges like that. Well, I think different people have different motivations for playing these 100Ks. I play them because I think I have an edge in them. I think I'm a expected winner every time I enter. To make the final table back-to-back -back years was just a great experience. My blood's definitely pumping, for sure, in this one. It's mine to win if I can play the way I've been playing, and it's mine to lose if I get stupid. I'm going to try not to do that. In poker, there's only so much you can do. You can just play your best, and the rest is in the hands of the poker gods. Welcome back to Bellagio and the WPT Super High Roller Final Table. It is great to be here back in Vegas for this amazing event. We watched these players put down $100,000 each just a couple days ago, and they're going after millions here tonight. Cards are ready to fly once again, so let's go down to the felt. Well, the amateur Jim Courtney out in front with nearly 1.7 million. Joseph Chung not far behind with 1.65 million. And Dan Perper and Andrew Robo, as you can see, on the extreme short stack. Yeah, the winner's going to take home over a million dollars, 1,023,000. And what's unique, Vince, is the guys in fourth, fifth, and sixth place, they get zero zippity doo dah. That should make this a fun final table. That is right. And he's at 2,000. Blinds are 8 and 16,000. Here we go. Action on Steven Silverman, young poker professional. He folds his hand. And now Dan Perper, who's an equity option trader from Highland Park, Illinois, is also going to fold. Action around to one of the top poker pros in the world, David Doc Sands. He goes out here, though. Now Joseph Chong, another poker pro out of Palos Verdes, California. Not going to play. It's so around to Andrew Robel, and look at this. He has picked up the weapons of mass destruction, the pair of aces well, on hand number one. Unbelievable, Vince. He's yep. on the short stack at this table. Just what you dream about. You sit down and look down at two aces in the first hand. Now how to play them, how to extract the most money from your victim. Uh, he's going to limp in here, Vince. There you go. There you go. Very sneaky. <laughs> and now it's on Jim Courtney. And oh, I can't believe what am this I seeing? This is unbelievable. What? I don't think in the history of 11 seasons on oh, the tour we've ever seen the blinds oh. both pick up two aces, especially on deal number one. Well, Jim goes all in, of course, <laughs> and a snap call oh. by Robel, and no one can believe it at the table. <laughs> what? Oh. Well, you, you shook your head when he called. You guys of course I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, unbelievable. <laughs> now, obviously. One of them's going to have to make a flush to win the pot. Oh, my God. Look at this. Three clubs come out. Jim Courtney has the ace of clubs. <laughs> How they put in the cold deck. Yeah, yeah, good. Always the cold decks at the WPT for the TV. And another club be spiked. Can Jim Courtney, oh, the real estate guy, no, it's a four spades on the turn. I mean, Vince, this is not even fair to lose when you have the same hand as your opponent. Don't I think some... it should be a push. Here we go to the river, Mike. 
to a club. Andrew doesn't want to see the club, and he does not well, see Well, it's a club. five, so Andrew Robo lives on, oh, that's but funny. justifiably yeah, nice, so. Nice doing business with you. Yes. <laughs> Much to the chagrin of the other players at the table, they would like to see Andrew gone, but doesn't happen. They split the pot as they should. It's like my trap works beautifully. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I sure hope he raises. <laughs> that is Jim Courtney, the real estate broker from Detroit, Michigan. He's 68 years old, a top businessman. Well, Andrew Robel, the guy he was up against, finished second in this same event last year. That is so right. Pretty impressive. Right back to the action, Dan Perper. Oh, well, he's picked up a big hand. He's got the ace king. Come on. Well, Dan finished fourth in this tournament last year. Chipping it here because he's on the short stack. Can't blame him. Doc Sands out. Joseph Chung out. Right. Yep. Yeah. Andrew Robel now going to take a peek at his cards. He's got a nothing hand. So he folds his hand around to Jim. He's out. Call. And look at this. Snap call by Steve Silverman with Queens. Miss what hands we're seeing here. Shocking. Aces versus aces. Queens versus ace king suited in the first two hands. Can you believe it? The classic race in poker, the ace king versus the queens. Who's going to win it? Daniel Perper must win to stay alive. Will the queens hold up? Here we go. And he hits king the king right just like on that. The flop. So Daniel has taken the lead with the two kings. Pretty nice flop for Daniel. Here comes 4th Street. Well, on eight, so we're down to the river card. Steve Silverman must catch a queen on the river to eliminate Daniel from this tournament. A big dog to do so. Can Steve hit lightning? Nine, nope. So there you go. Thanks. That race goes to the short stack. Daniel Perper stays alive. Yeah, and that was a big sigh of relief. <laughs> He can't believe he went up against Queens, but then he hit his hand. Nicely done, doubling up. Well, that's pretty incredible, the hands that we're seeing coming out so far. Ace King versus two Queens, Aces versus Aces. Wow. And there, of course, are the Royal Flush Girls at the Royal Flush Girls Social Bar, having a good time. All right, back to this hand. And the Andes are going up to 3,000. Blinds are 10 and 20 now. Robel this time with a queen five, releases that. And now Jim Courtney with a nice little pair of fives here. Well, Jim's just competition, loves playing the best. His last tournament cash was 2006, though. Will raise this hand, makes it 45,000 to go. Steven Silverman out. Uh, Dan Perper out as well. Yep. well. Doc Sands is not going out. He's got the ace king of diamonds. Absolutely love the way Doc Sands plays poker in terms of the way he does play when he plays, but I hate the way he plays because he plays so slow. Yes, very methodical, and he's going to re-raise Joseph Chung out. He is so deliberate. Every time he makes a decision, it drives other players at the table crazy. But they'd all love to have his results. Jim Courtney, though, is not going anywhere with the fives. Well, he does make the call. Well, everyone likes to see flops with small pairs. Jim Courtney taking a flop here. These are the two chip leaders going at it. Here comes the flop. Well, eight, six, three with two hearts. Nice flop for the small pair of Jim Courtney. Doesn't help Doc Sands, but Doc's first to act. He's getting that hand moving. Well, you know the continuation bet is coming here. You're not gonna put your opponent on little cards after raising and calling the raise before the flop. Doc is gonna bet like he has a hand. We know better, it's 224. Well, Jim's looking back at his fives again, trying to figure out what to do with them. So he's just gonna call. He does make the call. You know Doc Sands doesn't like that. No, that hurts. But he does like that as the ace peels off on the turn. Just like magic. Hits the ace. Well, Doc Sands, just incredible. Already this year, he's finished second, second, and third in three high roller events. Won over a million and a half in those. Could take home over another million tonight if he could win this one. Well, he's bet 357,000. Into Jim Courtney. 
Well, I think it's an easy getaway for Jim now. He can beat nothing but a stone bluff. Yep. That ace kind of solidifies it. And he will release the hand. Nicely done, Jim. With that pot, David Doc Sands takes a nice chip lead at this final table. The Doc is just operating on these guys right now. Will it continue? Stay tuned. Six players just getting started here at Bellagio. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by Vegas.com. Vegas.com. Do Vegas right. We are back here on the World Poker Tour at Bellagio in Las Vegas. Six players remain and the super high roller here at Bellagio. Over a million dollars goes to the winner, but the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth place finishers get nada, zippity doo dah, a fried egg, and they go home busted. And these players have a tremendous amount of courage to put up this kind of money, but of course they have great experience as well. Now if you want to improve your game and have fun in the process, maybe you should try clubwpt.com. It's a great way to play and to learn how to play poker online. You can also win your share of up to 100000 in cash and prizes every month and win entries into WPT events. That is so true. For a small monthly fee, you get so many different benefits, including the Saver's Guide, and you get a subscription to the WPT Magazine, which is quite nice. ClubWPT.com just got a facelift. There's new graphics. You can now also play on Mac. There's no downloads, no installs. Just click and play. That's right. Join today, ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Okay, let's get back to the action of the high roller final table. All right, six players remain. As you can see, winner's gonna take home over a million dollars. And these are some of the greats in the game playing and battling for this title here tonight. Well, David Doc Sands out in front with over two million in chips. He is the man to beat, no doubt about it. Let's go to the felt. Action on the real estate guy, Jim Courtney. Quick fold by him. Now Steven Silverman picks up a little pair of fours. Well, Steven just won the EPT High Rollers in Monte Carlo for one million. Just calls, doesn't raise with the small pair. Fold by Dan Perper, and now David Sands with a King-10 and the button. Well, he makes it 64,000 to go. Now, Joseph Chung, tough young poker pro, going to release his hand. Andrew Robel, finished runner-up in this event a year ago. Now looks down at ace-queen of diamonds. There you go. Very strong hand, ace-queen of diamonds. Well, he's on the short stack at this table, Vince. Yeah. He's going to ship it. You can't blame him. Shove time. Silverman with the fours now. He's got two fours, but he's got two players that have raised behind him. So he's going to right? exit yep. with the fours. He is out, and yes. Doc's saying, how much more is going to cost me? I will call. I'm priced in, I'm calling, and we've got a showdown. Ace queen up against king 10. Andrew Robles' life on the line here. Last time Andrew was all in, he had two aces, and he was tied and in jeopardy after his opponent flopped the flush draw. He's got to be thinking, what's going on here? I didn't win with aces, almost lost with him. Got ace queen, the guy calls me with king 10. Here we go. Yes, first three cards and a queen. queen. on the flop. That means Doc needs to catch a king to take the lead. Andrew Robo flopping nice there. Here comes fourth street. And the deuce comes off, so yeah. we're down to the river. For Andrew Robo to be eliminated, Doc Sands must catch a king on the river. That is all. It doesn't happen as the deuce comes off. So both short stacks have doubled up, Vince, and that's going to make an entire new dynamic for this final table. 138. They don't have to be so anxious to get their money in now. They've got a little time to play. Lots of hope for this six. No one willing to get up and take that walk out of here. Well, back to the table we go. Action's going to be on the 68-year-old amateur player, Jim Courtney. Quick fold by him. Steven Silverman also going out. Or now time. Dan Perper, who made this final table last year. Oh, he's got a nice one, pair of jacks. And he just stumbled up with ace king against two queens. Now he looks down at two jacks. Gotta love it. 
Yeah, he's going to move it up to 45,000 to go. David Sands folds his hand. Joseph Chung now with an 8-4 clubs in the small blind. Oh, boy, Vince. I don't like this play. Well, he's going to play around with it. Calling out of position with the 8-4 clubs. Now Robel releases his hand. Joseph Chung is known as a gambling player, no doubt about that. This proves it right here. Jacks versus 8-4. And here we go with the first three. Well, the flop comes up queen 7-5. That's an inside straight there for Joseph Chung. And he's going to check. Dan Perper, no continuation wow. bet. Can't kind of believe he wouldn't bet that. Oh, boy. Oh, and it may cost him big time here, Vince. Six of diamonds. Joseph Chung has made a straight. And how? Casually kicks in 50,000, Mike. Yeah, look at that little bet. And Perper's not going to fold. He's made this call. Down to the river we go. Well, an eight comes off. Joseph's not going to be crazy Let's about see, that think... card. Started the hand with a little over 400. Mullen. And Chung says all in. Wow. Put all your chips in there, Dan, he says. Well, Dan's got about 300,000 left is all. Joseph just moving in. That was not a good runoff for me. I wonder if the guy had a nine high straight, he's going to get it in anyway. And he's not throwing his hand away. <laughs> So he's trying to represent like he might be possibly bluffing here. And Daniel knows he's very capable of making a bluff in this spot. Dan Perper, this could be a nice lay down. And he does the right thing. And he makes the good lay down there, but I'm not sure by checking on the flop that it might not have cost him the pot. Yeah, I think so. Well, as you can see, Daniel Perper perplexed there, not happy about losing with the two jacks. Last year was very surreal. I just couldn't believe that I made it so far against people who I thought are really good. And then coming into the to the final table as a chip leader with a real shot at, at winning a WPT was, was a pretty special feeling. Finished a very disappointing fourth, and this year I plan to definitely run it up and hopefully take it home. Well, you gotta like this guy. Not a professional player, but to make the final table on the high rollers two years in a row is so impressive. It is impressive because these are quality fields that play these $100,000 buy-in tournaments. All right, back to the felt. Steve Silverman with an ace three of clubs. Quickly folds Dan Perper now with the... Look at this. I can't believe the hands we're seeing tonight. Pair of queens. Well, they just lost with two wow. jacks a minute ago. Now it picks up queens. You know he's going to raise it, just trying to figure out how much to raise it. Yeah, it's got to be so exciting when you're at a final table and you start picking up big hands like this. And there's the raise, makes it 50,000. Want to dock Sands. Uh, he's got ace, deuce of diamonds, but exits to go out. Joseph Chong now. Oh, he's got a pair of eights. Well, we just saw him play the eight four. So certainly two eights got to look a lot better to him. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to raise it to 125. Andrew Robel now with a king nine of clubs. Well, the raise shut Andrew out of this pot. Now the real estate man, Jim Courtney, can't play. Back Come on, on. Perper goes all in. Had well, a quick call. Yep, all in and called, and pair over pair, Joseph can see. He is not in good shape here. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> he definitely dreamt those queens. Yeah. Boy, you ain't whistling Dixie. Well, Joseph said again, you got a big hand? I'm amazed. Daniel Perper from Chicago with a big opportunity now to really get back into this. Well, Joseph Chung with the two snowmen, but they could melt away here because his opponent's got two queens. And here come the first three. Well, nine, six, deuce with two hearts. Seven for a sweat? No. <laughs> Seven hearts. <laughs> yeah, Daniel looking very happy. And here comes the turn, jack of spades. Also good for Dan. Well, Joseph Chung must catch an eight on the river to win this pot and eliminate Daniel Perper. Otherwise, Daniel is going to double up yet again, and he does as the four diamonds comes off. Daniel Perper 
doubling up once again. Came in as an extreme short stack. Oh, boy, the equity options <laughs> trader getting a good return on his investment right there, man. Yeah, big smile at the table. No one wants to go away here at Bellagio. You know, Vince, the WPT isn't just big buying events like our main tour stops and the super high roller. We also have some WPT caliber events with more accessible buy-ins, like the non-televised main events and our regional and national tours. Well, that is right, Mike. And since we last saw our viewers, the WPT hosted a national event at Le Casino Imperial in Annecy, France. But WPT also held two non-televised main events, one in Florida at Jacksonville Best Bet and the other in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at the Playground Poker Club, where Amir Babakani took home over $440,000, as well as an entry into the season-ending WPT World Championship. He also gets to have his name inscribed forever on the WPT Champions Cup. The WPT hosts events year-round, so if you're interested in playing one in the near future, please log on to WPT.com. Social poker sites aren't real poker because they're nothing to win. They're just all in fests. That's why we play real poker on ClubWPT.com, where we can win our share of 100,000 cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. All right, welcome back to Bellagio and the WPT Super High Roller Tournament. Six players left fighting it out for over a million dollar first place prize. They are gambling high right now. Let's go back to the table. And there you can see Doc Sands out in front with 1.9 million. Jim Courtney in second. Joseph Chung followed by Steven Silverman. Daniel Perper and Andrew Robo still the short stacks. But much better off than when we started this final table. All right, action's going to Joseph Chung, the young poker professional who grew up in Palos Verdes, California. Quick fold by him. Over to top pro, Andrew Roble. He's out. And now the real estate man, Jim Courtney. He is 68 years old. He says he's been playing poker since he was nine years old. Wow. Not a professional, but he's got king queen this time, and he likes it. He's going to raise. Yeah, makes it 45,000 to go. Silverman out. And the other so-called amateur at the table, Dan Perper, also folding. Now Doc Sands, the chip leader, looks down at ace nine off suit. Yep. Now he knows that this amateur player is probably going to have a hand when he raises it, so it'll be interesting to see how Doc is going to play the ace nine here. Yep. I ain't going to make the call. Throws in a little breadcrumb, <laughs> makes the call, hopes to get lucky, and here we go. Now flop is queen, queen nine, three queens for Jim Courtney. Incredible. Unfortunately for Doc Sands, he's got a pair of nines and he's with got an ace kicker. Check the nines. And Jim, three of a kind. Show tunes going off in his head right now. He's got a bet. Doesn't slow play him. Fires right out. A little TC Fly continuation bet with a huge hand. 60,000. Yeah, this could spell a little trouble for Doc Sands here if some little cards come off. Yep, and Doc is going to call. Doc almost plays like a robot. So methodical, very smooth. Oh, King comes off now, giving Jim Courtney a full out. Oh, is that all? No card Doc Sands can catch to win this pot. He is drawing dead and checks. He does check. Oh, look at that, Vince. Like it. He drops his jaw like, oh, I don't like that card. I'll check. Checks the nuts and a five of diamonds on the river. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. That shows you that Jim can really play. You know, you don't bet him when you have a gigantic hand, of course. Wait for your sucker to... Well, Catch a little bit this more. This is a ho hum bet here, too. Yeah. 100,000 here. Doc Sands sits back in his chair. He says, What's going on? The guy checked on the turn. All of a sudden, he's going to bet on the river when that card comes off. So Doc now knows that the either guy's either got nothing or he's got a big, big Duke. He's got a monster. Doc with nines, ace kicker. Yeah, you can release this hand, though, knowing the player, knowing that he raised before the flop. Yeah, he's going to lay it down, yeah. Vince, and a good lay down there by Doc Sands. Much to the sadness of Jim Courtney. Yeah, Jim Courtney. Sorry, dude. He owns a major business back in Detroit in the real estate business, but he just has a passion for poker. And right there you see the trophy with the cash that's going to be given out to the high roller champion. What do you do with all your trophies, Vance? Yeah, right. 
Huh? Trophies. <laughs> I got a lot of dust on my old <laughs> tennis trophies. <laughs> You'll all get to see it on TV. Uh, <laughs> you probably sit, sit up and polish them every night. <laughs> oh boy, okay, back to this game of poker. Couple folds, and now Dan Perper with the overpair. Gotta feel 